In this video, we're going to take the Loop Deck Live, which is basically a stream deck on steroids. And together we're going to set it up in SPAD.NEX for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're looking for more information on the Loop Deck or on SPAD.NEX, then check out my earlier videos, which include setting up the Loop Deck as a MIDI device. Links to both in the notes below. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching. And let's get started. For clarity, let me state that this video is how to configure the Loop Deck Live within SPAD.NEXT and not a detailed tutorial on how to use SPAD.NEXT. There are plenty of other videos, forums, discords and other resources available to help you with that. Although, of course, we will be covering the basics. In my How to Set It Up as a MIDI Device video, I ended the video with a recommendation that you set up the buttons and any dials required as a MIDI device so SPADNEX can see it and we're ready to configure. I've done that and saving as a separate application profile, I have now renamed the button as shown above. And the reason I've done that is we are going to recreate the CAP140 autopilot in SPAD.NEXT. It's far simpler to do than you may suspect. You could of course set this up as a Garmin 430, 530 or G1000. This video is designed to show you the basic steps required to achieve that. The Loop Deck has all the buttons and dials of the CAP140. I have renamed the buttons in the order of my preference and I've also allocated a button, not a dial, to this rotary dial here. And that'll be my autopilot on or off button. The CAP140 has one dual rotary dial and I'll be just using this dial here to imitate that. I've added a second dial on the right hand side, but we won't be configuring that in this tutorial. Although in my finished profile I have included that to change my heading. Just makes more sense. In my MIDI setup, all the buttons are note play. I don't have any note toggle functions configured. All the parameters used for the buttons are exactly the same as shown in my video with one exception. And that's the autopilot on off button. You'll see here that the note duration is 300 milliseconds, not 100. And the velocity or loudness is set to 100. Not sure why, but I needed to set these higher than my recommended defaults to make them function as expected. And as mentioned, autopilot on off, I've fixed as a button function on one of the rotary dials as they can be pressed in as per the buttons. Once you've configured the Loop Deck Live as a MIDI output, the configured buttons and dials will be visible in SPAD.NEXT. It's best to check that by pressing the various buttons and moving the various dials to ensure that it lights up accordingly. This just ensures everything's working as expected. But there is a caveat or something to watch out for. Once SPAD.NEXT has seen an output from the MIDI device, perhaps from a previous profile that you've created, it will display that output anyway, whether or not it's actually configured for the profile you're working on currently. So the message here is a simple one. Make sure the button or dial is active, i.e. recognize, before configuring it in SPAD.NEXT. When opening up SPAD.NEXT to configure, make sure the Loop Deck Live is on and the profile loaded. You'll be able to check this under Devices. But before we configure, we need to first go to Profiles, second tab from the top. And we need to create a new profile. And there's two ways we can do this. You can select an existing profile and then click on New Profile from this, which means it will copy the existing configuration across or create an empty profile. If this is your first configuration, you'll obviously choose Choose an empty profile. You can give it a name, select OK, and double clicking on a profile will make it active. I've already created the profile, so I'm not going to create another one. As mentioned earlier, this is not a SPAD.NEXT tutorial, but once you've created a profile, you have the option to enable this for selected aircraft, and you're able to determine which aircraft. And then, for example, when that aircraft was active in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this profile would become active. Anyway, I've set up a profile, Tutorial 140, and we're ready to start configuring. Let's head back to Devices, and let's get started. My first configuration will be Autopilot on and off. 
So I press that button on the Loop Deck Live to see what button under SPAD next lights up. In my case, it's the one on the end, so I click on that. So I've now checked the button is active and I know which button it is. Spadnik draws a red line, it's button 024, and below that line it indicates any configuration. In this case, obviously, there's nothing yet. On the right hand side, we're going to select Add Event and then Button Pressed, and a menu will open up. And here we can do a number of things. We could add a condition, something we won't be doing today. This is for more complex configurations utilizing Boolean logic. For example, it could say if this and this, then do this, and so on. But what we're interested in is Add Action. A submenu opens up, and we want to select Send Simulation Event. And this brings up a menu of all SimConnect functions. And 90% of the time, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it here. On the left-hand side, there are a number of other subcategories, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and these are direct commands, as well as others for different aircraft. But today we're simply focused on the SimConnect functions. They address the Sim directly and are very powerful. The list is huge, so we'll use the search option to find what we're looking for, and I'm going to type in CAP140, and all instructions directly related to the CAP140 are shown here. How easy is that? There's what we're looking for, CAP140 Push Autopilot. Highlight that, press OK, confirm that's the action we want, which it is, it adds it to the action box, I'm happy with that, select now OK, and that function is now configured to that button. Done. And most of what we're going to configure today is going to follow exactly the same process. So there's quite a lot of repetition. But nonetheless, for anybody who's new to this, it would be worthwhile running through it to give you a feel for the overall functionality. Now physically pressing the heading button on the loop deck, I see which button lights up, click on it, and we're ready to configure. And we're going to follow exactly the same process. Add event, button pressed, add action, send simulation event. It remembers where we were last, that's the CAP140, which is exactly where we want to be. We're looking for the heading instruction, there it is. Select it, press OK, happy with that. It's put in the action box, press OK, and once again we're done. On the loop deck next to heading is nav, so that's the one we'll do next. Press the button to identify it. There it is. Click on that. And we can go ahead and configure it in exactly the same way as we did before. I'm going to allow most of the configurations to play through. I'm not going to narrate all the way through it. That would be both boring and pointless. But we will stop and pause at various points where there's things that we need to be aware of. Note that your button sequence or button numbers may be different to mine. It depends how you've configured it and where you put it on the loop deck panel. Note there are two different options for the barrow or barometer setting. Long push or press and short. Spadnecks can determine between a long press and a short press. And depending on the device you're using, one button then can carry out two functions. This is the case with the Loop Deck Live. However, we won't cover that in detail here. For this configuration, we're going to choose the short press.
You may notice on my loop deck setup there are three buttons with purple colouring. I have set these up not as buttons but purely as text boxes. You can access the text box top right, click on the three dots and you'll be presented with a submenu selection. From the submenu box select create custom action and one of the actions available is text. And here you can enter any text that you require. Text needs to be entered in both boxes. I've used CAP 140 Autopilot just to use up some unused spaces. Our next choice is the vertical speed up button. And there's a couple of changes here. First of all, we'll follow the normal process. Press the button to identify it. We see it blinking. Select it in SPAD Next. And now we can go ahead and add event. Button pressed. Add action. Send simulation event. And we remain within the CAP140 search of the SIM Connect functions. There we see it, CAP140 push up, select OK. OK again, we're happy with that. But with just this setting, I found that the performance and responsiveness was erratic. It did not always function as expected, because it didn't always recognize it was vertical speed mode. So I'm going to edit the event, and I'm going to add another action. Once again, I'm going to select send simulation event, but I need something to tell it that it's vertical speed. There's nothing under the CAP140, but I'm going to look under Autopilot. And typing in AP underscore is a quick way to reference everything for the Autopilot. Now it's just a matter of searching for vertical speed. Might take a little while. There's a whole lot of instructions here, but I'm looking for vertical speed on. And there it is. AP underscore VS underscore on. I'm going to select that, click OK, ask me to confirm, yes I'm happy with that. If it's not right I can always delete it. And now when I press the button I'm going to get push up and vertical speed on. I did try a number of different combinations but this one worked the best for me. Happy with that, select OK and we can see the two functions listed. I could have opted for add event but edit was easier and tidier. And now we just need to repeat the process for the vertical speed down button. First of all, we'll go and add it under the CAP140, which will be the first instruction. And then we'll go to the autopilot functions, which are not CAP140 specific, but generally apply to the sim overall. We'll add that as we did for the up button and we'll be done. OK, that's us done on the buttons. They're all configured. Let's go on to the dial. On the loop deck, it's top left. Identify the dial. I can see the axis moving. Select it. And once again, we go to Add Event. We have a number of different choices here. I'm going to choose Tuner Clockwise, as it is a rotary dial and not a standard axis. I'm going to add an action and the same again, Send Simulation Event. On this occasion, I want to go back to my CAP140 options. There they are, shortcut through the search bar. And here I have a number of different ways I can configure this. I could, for example, configure the standard rotary dial for the outer, then use a combination of other factors such as button press, which would be a toggle in this case, to change it to inner. Or I could just configure it to one or the other. In this example, I'm only going to use the inner. The outer changes it by thousands and the inner changes it by 100 feet increments when adjusting altitude, for example. So smaller is better in this case and I found the speed of adjustment to be more than satisfactory. Again, I've chosen the inner because I also have to adjust the barometer and I certainly won't want to do that in large increments. I'm going to choose knob inner increment as I'm turning it clockwise. Select OK. And I get the standard confirmation. I'm happy with that. Clockwise turn will increment the value. We're done here for now. Select OK. 
And now we need to select the counterclockwise action. This time add event, tuner counterclockwise, add action, send simulation event, back to my cap 140 options. And this time of course I'm going to select the inner knob decrease option. There it is. Confirmation. Yes, I'm happy with that. Now here there's a number of very important settings we need to be aware of. We can change the speed of the dial, flick acceleration to on, and we can adjust all of these different parameters, including the standard multiplier and the maximum multiplier. And the effect of doing this is to speed up or slow down the number of units that the dial will count through as you turn the dial. I found the settings as shown here work well for me. I can move the altitude in hundreds of feet by turning the dial slowly and a rapid turn very quickly clicks over to thousands. But this is where you'd make any adjustments or alterations to the dial speed that was required. This for example would probably apply to the barometer setting if it was on a separate dial. Anyway I'm happy with those settings so back. Now we can see we've set up the dial with both a clockwise and anti-clockwise action. We're done, it's all configured. It's good practice to regularly save your configuration as you build it by hitting the save button here. If you don't save, any changes you made will be lost. But now it's time to give it a test in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's jump into Sim and give it a go. For the test, it's a simple flight plan. Start in the air, about 2,500 feet, follow the nav path, but then deviate off to do an ILS approach runway 09 in Bristol. For this test, we're in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. For our first test, let's check autopilot off and on. Well, that's working fine. Now let's put the aircraft in heading mode. There we are, heading. For some reason, the nav track's not showing on the GPS. Never mind, it'll still be active. Just change our view here a little bit. That's better. And now let's put on ALT. And it should hold and record our current altitude, which it's done. As mentioned in my previous video, the loop deck can display icons. I just haven't done it for time purposes here. While we're currently in heading mode, let's change to nav mode. And that's now changed across nicely. And we can see the aircraft turning onto the nav track. Our dial should be in alt mode by default. So let's just test that. Increase and decrease the altitude. That's all working well and very responsive as well set an altitude of 3,000 feet and now using the up button let's set the rate of climb 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 700 feet per minute and the autopilot is displaying VS or vertical speed mode which is exactly what we expected. Good time just to test whether the vertical speed down works and we can change the rate of climb now pressing the down button and our rate of climb is decreasing. After a short delay, the display goes back to the set altitude. Once again, that's correct. This is a very short leg. I'm just going to turn the altitude down to 2,900 feet. I don't think we're going to have enough time to get to 3,000 because we've still got to descend for our approach to runway 09 at Bristol International. Slowly getting towards 2,900, although we are in a fair amount of turbulence. But that's great, keeps things interesting. Let's now test the barometer. I'm going to press the barometer key and then using the same dial because I'm in barometer mode now, I should be able to change the pressure. Nope, I'm turning the wrong dial. Press barometer again and I'm able to adjust the pressure. No problem at all. Very good. I'll set it back to 1013. That's hectopascals of course. After a short period, it will reset to ALT mode. It does this automatically. And we've now reached our altitude of 2,900 feet. We're a bit late on our descent. Going to set it for 1,500 feet. I use the ARM button. And now using the DOWN key, going to set a rapid rate of descent, 1,000 feet per minute. Just a side note that the ARM function doesn't work fully as it should. But that's in the SIM and not the loop deck. Descending rather rapidly, just need to pull back on the throttle and slow down a portion. We're nearly at the airport. We're nearly at 1500 feet. I'm now going to switch to heading mode and start preparing for our approach to runway 09 at Bristol. Just turning off the nav track and turning a little bit to the right 
to more correctly align ourselves for the approach. We're going to fly more or less directly onto the base leg. I'm now just dialing in the ILS 110.15 for runway 09 and when we hit the approach mode it should allow us to catch the localizer. There we are, that's set. I've now manually changed to nav mode from GPS. You could of course configure that to the loop deck as well. I've now engaged approach mode and we can see the aircraft is reacting immediately. That's Bristol ahead of us just on that little bit of high ground there. The autopilot will now hold us at 1500 feet. We can see the glide slope is indicated underneath and as we meet the glide slope that will overtake from the altitude hold. Autopilot will do this automatically. We're now very close to the glide slope and we should see the change happen. Any there it goes. It's captured the glide slope and we're on the ILS. Now I don't profess to be an expert in SPAD Next. I haven't used it really for many years, not since I dropped prepared. But I did find configuring it for the loop deck fairly straightforward and easy. My config is not perfect, there's still much that can be done and further improvements to be made. But I think what it has highlighted is the very versatile loop deck can fairly easily be configured in SPAT Next. For any of you that got this product or thinking about getting it, hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Thanks very much for being with me today. If you made it this far, well done. One point I should have mentioned is both SPAD Next and the loop deck software need to be running in the background for the config to work. In both cases there was no recognizable impact on FPS. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon and bye for now.